Hey everybody, this video is about trailer maintenance. It was something I try to do every year to the trailer. Uh, A, to get it ready for inspection and, and just to do, go over everything to make sure it's all good for the next firewood season. Um, and I, one thing I keep forgetting to me mention in my videos I'm um, also on Instagram, Lanky Logger on Instagram. Maybe you want to check me out there. There's different stuff on there than you might see on the videos. And if you're interested, and please like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Okay, everybody, we're back from getting the tires. They're returned back on the the old ones off and the new to me ones on. Uh, two here. And the two there, and that's a spare inside. The inside one's a spare. So four tires going back on, but first, uh, the next thing I have to do is pull the brake drums off, check the wheel bearings, uh, make sure there's ample grease in there, and uh, adjust the brakes up because they need it. And, uh, and to see if the pads are good still. So that's next. So the light is terrible in my garage until I get my new lights in. I already have them, just got to get them installed. Anyway, headlamp on. So this is something I do at the end of every firewood season. I pull these off. Just check everything. Because if you don't, there is nothing worse than going down the road with a wheel bearing failure or whatever. So, well, this trailer's going on three seasons, I believe. Maybe, I think I did three full seasons of firewood with this trailer. I haven't replaced the brakes yet. Uh, I've set them up a couple of times. See, now, that was loose. I could have did that with my fingers, loosened that off my fingers. That's not good. That means that's a good thing that I'm tearing these all apart to uh, then I uh, preload my bearing when I'm done. But anyway, uh, yeah, this is the fourth, what did I say, third season on these brakes. And where I already pulled this one off, I kind of know what I'm up against with this one. Um, They're getting more. I'll just show you when I'm done. We're going to get things off here. They're about half, a little better than half wore out. There's not a lot of pad left on them. But there's the other side. Oh. 
But the good thing is, they're still paying on them. And we're gonna run them. We're gonna run them. I'm just gonna adjust them up. That one actually pulled off pretty fairly hard, so uh, it's not gonna need a lot. But I am gonna adjust them up. I'll uh, move up the adjuster and make sure it's good and free. And then I'm gonna pack my bearings, put everything back together. When we say pack a bearing, these are actually pretty good. Um, but I'm going to pack this outside one and I'm not going to take the inside one out because I'll have to pop the, uh, I'll have to pop this seal out and I'll probably end up ruining it to, when I take it out. So when I put new pads and new, when I go to put new, well, I'm going to put someday next year when I put new pads on, I'll put the whole backing plate on. I'll buy the whole thing. You can buy the whole thing, backing plate, all together. You just take your four bolts off. Take your four bolts off here. And... Cut your wires for your uh, for your brakes. Slam the whole thing back on. All new brakes, all new all new springs, everything. It just it's it's a it's a backing plate. It's all assembled. They're just as cheap to buy that way as buy all the parts individual and fool around with trying to fool around the springs and everything else. You just slam the whole thing on and reattach your wires. I'll twist them together and then I'll use heat, heat shrinks so the water and salt and from the road won't get in them. So, back to packing my bearings. So I'll just take grease, slam it in the palm of my hand like that. And just drive it in. And by squishing it in, I mean around this lip here. It'll drive it in around the bearing, the needles. It's a taper bearing. And uh, that's what you call a packed bearing. And I'm just using a multi-purpose grease, nothing special. This is something, like I say, I do every year. So it's... There's never any shortage of grease. There isn't already, but I'm still packing them. Yeah, that one's done. And the inside one, like I say, I'll have to. I would have to pop that seal out, and I'm not going to do that because I'll ruin it when I do it. There's a good chance I'm going to ruin it. I don't have a new one with me, so I got a needle needle to put on the end of my grease gun and I'm going to just uh, I'm going to take that same thing basically what I did with my hand is driving the grease in in that bearing but I'm going to do that right now so I just got this I'm going to stick on the end of my grease gun got a grease nipple on the other end It's not what it's for. It's actually for greasing uh, universal universal joints without a grease nipple. Sometimes they came with a you know, I don't know how to explain it, like a orifice. You just drive that in, and you can and you can uh, grease your universals. Most some of you probably already know what I'm talking about. Anyway, this is I'm just gonna pack drive a bunch of grease in this bearing with this needle. And this one, like most trailers, have the grease nipple right there. It's right there, but I'd like to know what I'm putting in here. 
I mean, I can pump four or five pumps of grease or six pumps of grease in there and say my wheel bearings are packed or my wheel bearings are greased. But when everything's together, you're just pumping grease in there and you don't know where, how much you're putting in and if it's enough. Yeah, when I took this front one off, there was this, the, uh, the bearings weren't very, they didn't have a lot of grease on them and they were pretty dry. So by taking it apart and putting it and packing the grease in there and knowing what you're putting in there, uh, smear some in here, just in the, in the hub of the, assembly make sure we get lots in there no nope. again don't put too much in there because you can it'll ooze out around your seal and then it gets gets in your brakes and then you have the worst problem because you got a bunch of grease in around your brakes so too much is a bad thing too put that bearing back there Get my seal. See how that's a little loose there? Going on over the brakes. We're going to fix that after we get this nut back on. I'm just showing this one how I do this. And I'm just going to bore you to death by sitting here you're rambling on about trailer maintenance. Uh, I think after this, I'm going to, uh, won't be tonight, today, but uh, I'll put the wheels back on, obviously. Um, and I'm going to undercoat it too. I usually do that every year. Just spray some oil all through it and over it. This one here is actually you don't want to crank them tight, but you want them you can hear the brakes there now. We might not have to set this one up hardly at all. Doesn't sound like it anyway. And just put the cap on like this. And this cap, of course, like a lot of you know, has this little rubber, this little rubber uh, cover you just pop off with a screwdriver and you can get at that. With the, that's how you get at this grease nipple. But like I said, now I know this is good for next year. With lots of grease in there. done. I might get a couple of turns on that. So all I got to do is pop the little rubber grommet off the back. A little plug. Pop that off. Now there's a proper adjusting tool for this. Obviously I don't have it. I got a screwdriver so that's what I'm using. I'm going to go in behind and I'm just going to turn that little star nut and adjust those up a little bit. They're pretty well. Can't get much better than that but we're going to do a little more. There, right there. That's how I like them right there. They're touching. They're a little aggressive, but 
there's rust in there and everything else so that'll clean off that's how i like them and then as soon as you hit your trailer brakes they're right there that might be a little tight but the, like i say there's a little rust and, and stuff a little clean off and like i say the old brakes are getting worn, so they're kind of they just need to be adjusted right up to to to, to work good anyway. Okay, the word I was looking for, the brakes are glazed over. They get glazed over and they're not as aggressive. So like that's why I like to have them just so. Very close and adjusted up good. Now, for you people that knew what I was doing, already noticed I put that cover on, but I didn't put the the uh, cotter pin back, back in the lock the nut. So I did take that back off again. <laughs> I put the uh, cotter pin back on and the covers back on again. So both these sides, this side is done. And I greased my walking bean pin right there. That's all done. So I'm gonna put the tires back on this side and then we're gonna go do the other side. All right, that side's complete, but uh, I'm not going to uh, get in depth of uh, doing the other side. I'll stick the camera up and do a little time lapse there for you. Um, what we're going to do afterwards, after the uh, other side's adjusted up and uh, wheel bearings done, tires on. Um, I got some t paint to touch up in this trailer and we're going to, we're going to talk about that here after I'm uh, done the other side. Okay, that side's done. Uh, it didn't take long. Brakes were about the same. Half wore out. Packed wheel bearings. Adjusted them out against the hub, brake hub. Um, tires back on. Now, when I drop the trailer down, I'm going to torque all these wheel nuts, so, just so you know. Okay, all wheels torqued. Uh, I torqued them to 120 pounds, I believe. Should be lots. Not too tight, but tight enough. Uh, went around and greased everything that needed to be greased. Um, all the uh, back door pins, uh, hinges I should say. So next is, I'm gonna to touch up some paint and I have to show you, I'm gonna show you here. So, of course this is where all the rocks hit from the, from the uh, truck wheels. Both sides are the same. So it's just starting to uh, rust a little bit. Um, it's not too bad, but it's bad enough that I don't want to leave it another season. So I'm just thinking about doing like from this cross member down here and over, just doing this area. I'm going to, uh, rough it all up, get the scaly stuff off and, uh, just touch that up and touch some other spots up but this this trailer is in pretty good shape um, rust wise so far I knew this going in buying this trailer or any other trailer that I've had before um, unless you go with a galvanized trailer or or the uh, aluminum ones uh, you're gonna you're gonna be painting these once touching them up but I found with previous trailers I had, if you just, you know, put it in the garage once a year and touch touch it up, keep it touched up in the spots where it's bad, it always seems to look good. And, and uh, you know, it's a, it's it's important to do, or you're someday you're just going to have nothing. So that's next. Okay, I took the tarp down tarp roll and so I can get at everything good I'm going to clean these areas up I'm going to show you what I got to put on them 
Dome 16, it's called. Ultimate rust prevention, preventive coating. So I was told by a good friend of mine who's used this stuff before. Just, he just said scrape it down with a knife and putty knife and uh, get the loose scale off and, and put it right, right over top. But I might go a little step further and uh, at least take the grinder and wire wheel to it and clean it. Try to get everything I can off it and uh, yeah, go from there. Now, it's supposed to kills rust permanently, seals out moisture, rust and corrosion. Ex excellent on rusted metal. That's what it says there on the can. That was $65 a can. Uh, that was a quart. And uh, apparently it uh, makes a hard coating on the, on the metal when it hardens. But this stuff is black. I did get it black. I don't, I don't know if you can get it any other color or not, but it is black. Even though it is black, and it's probably not going to be a gloss black. I'm, Assuming probably it's going to be kind of a faded black color likely. I don't know yet. We'll find out here in a bit, but uh, I'm going to paint over top of that when it dries uh, Because I guess it cracks in the Sun if the Sun gets at it and cracks the uh, Starts cracking it because it's a kind of a thick coat coating so paint over top of it and then it Kind of protect that stuff, I guess and it's another layer there for rocks to try to chew through and till next time we have to paint it. Okay, this is probably going to be far pretty when it's done. I'm hoping it's going to look better. Obviously than that, but I'm going to do a bunch more areas. And uh, just down here, just touch ups. Another area. On the other side, same idea right there. The rust there. And that's all I plan to do. I'm just going to touch those areas up with the rocks and beat on them. And get done this project because I got so much, too much to do. Okay, here goes nothing. All right, let's see what happens. Like I said, this is this is touch up only. If I were to do a good job, it would be sandblast. I'd be sandblasting this and spraying it on and everything else. This is just to prevent this from getting any worse. And I think it'll be fine. There it is already, but they say you got to paint over top of it. We're going to let that harden. There's the other side. Puts a nice uh, coat on it. I like it. Okay, so this is hardened. Looks good. I mean, my rough marks I made with the wire wheel and the rust marks, but there's the there's the new and there's the original. So, like I was said earlier, the uh, fellow that been helping me with this paint. He said you got to paint over it because the sun will crack this POV 16 paint, rust inhibitor paint. So all I'm going to do is stick some gloss black trim, trim clad over top of it to, to uh, protect it. I've done this with trailers before and it works great. So here we go. There, easy peasy. That was second coat. You only saw a little bit of that, but who wants to walk, go, watch a guy paint anyway? That's done. I just touched up the two front parts there in the front of the trailer, a little bit in the bottom. 
over here where the rocks were hitting the bottom of the fender, both sides. That's it, that's all to getting. Now, on to the next project, undercoating. Okay guys, today is another day. Uh, paint is hardened on, sorry, hardened on dry. <laughs> Um, and I just put the tarp roll back up in place. I did all unbolt it, as you saw. So I left it all out like this. I want to show you guys something and explain a few things why I do what I do here. Uh, for you, for the you that haven't seen any of my videos before, this is a Lamar uh, seven by. Uh, 7 by 12 and then I installed these uh, greedy boards on here I think one's a 2 by 8 and then a 2 by 6 I can haul I can haul a cord and a half loose two cord piled and so on um, I was gonna go with a 14 when I bought it but uh, it was just a little bit long and any of you, like you people that deliver firewood, you know what uh, kind of situations you get into back and in driveways. But anyways, yes, this is a trailer that's I think three years old now, so that's why we had to touch up the paint. Um, I want this is what I want to show you before I I'm gonna I'm gonna take pull this out of the garage here to want to undercoat it, and uh, I want to explain a couple things that I've done to help this trailer to, so it stays in good shape and, well, it still is in good shape. Um, right here, you'll see a hole right there. And the same as the other side. I drilled that hole in there and then I hook a long tube to my undercoating gun and I do this whole length this whole length right to the back I spray it with oil fill it with, don't fill it I just spray it with oil and then what I did was underneath you'll see they just spot welded it to here and here and I knew when I could sell, tell by the way that you know way the trailers built that up under here probably didn't get any paint and it's probably just untreated steel and it was gonna rust. So I siliconed a bead all along the bottom here before I put undercoating in there, black silicone. And, uh, and then I, and I take this whole length of this rail here and I just undercoat it. And I've seen these trailers a good friend of mine has one it's actually a little newer than mine but his his all weeps water when it gets water in there it all weeps rust down over your trailer and it looks like crap to be honest with you and I saw this to be a problem when I bought the trailer so this is why I, I just wanted to explain to you why I you're gonna see me undercoat it but I didn't want to stop midstream and uh, explain this all out. I'd rather do it while it's in the garage. And I got the stove on. I had this in the house. I'm going to use this. I got this at uh, CarQuest. That's what I'm going to put on it for undercoating. It's black so it'll match good with the trailer. You won't see it until it gets dirty and muddy I guess. And I want to show you a couple other things I did for this trailer when I bought it. After, as soon as I did bought it, I did to it. These uh, pipes are uh, square tubing, go right down to the bottom. That's what your hinges are all hooked to. And see what's going on there? Those holes weren't there. And that's what I would have had on the sides of my trailer if I didn't silicone those and undercoat it. But anyway, I uh, 
and I'll undercoat these tubes too. I'll put under spray undercoating down in them. These had plastic covers on them, but you can see how long they lasted. So I drilled these holes so the water would weep out. Because in our climate here, if water gets setting down in there and this trailer's setting outside in the winter, the ice is going, it's going to freeze and then it's going to expand all these tubes and whatever. So anyway, I drilled them here and there, same side, or same as the other side, I should say. And you can see by the little bit of drains out. So that's what I did to this, this trailer when it was new. Those few little things made quite a difference. And there, same side, or same as the other side, I should say. And you can see by the little bit of drains out. So that's what I did to this, this trailer when it was new. Those few little things made quite a difference. Massey 35, if any of you guys are wondering, deluxe model, came with power steering, she's fancy. That tractor's been on this farm for whole life, it was bought brand, my grandfather bought it brand new, uh, 1965 I believe, 55, sure, I have to ask my father again. So, I'm going to set you guys up outside here, somewhere, there's a couple of angles. And I'm going to give this a quick splash under coating. It's going to going to be quick, and then I'm just going to dump back or back it back in the garage again in the heat and let it do its creeping, the oil do its creeping, and uh, it's going to be done finally. This has been a long drug out video. I've just been doing this on my days that uh, weren't fit to do anything else. So today is the day that's going to be done finally. One last final touch. Just gotta grease the grease nipples for the hoist.
All right, guys, this uh, finally wraps up the video of trailer maintenance. Um, one thing I'm going to do for next year is uh, for sure undercoat it again. I left that too long. Like I said, I think I did that when the, uh, the uh, trailer was new. So I'm going to do it again. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's it. I, you just saw me grease it. Uh, grease the hoist part, the hinges, pins. Um, I put pretty well all that uh, four liter of undercoating on. So that's soaked good and I'm done. It's done for next year until next year's wood season or this year's wood season, I should say now. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I know it wasn't woods related, but it's... Uh, it's part of the part of the gig, you know. You got to look after your gear, so it's a uh, it's important to uh, you know. The trailers are too much money to buy these days, and uh, just look after them. It's easy. Anyway, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you.